In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put some reinforcing feathers or splines into your heirloom box project. And I'm also going to introduce you to constraints. In the last tutorial, we had we created a lid subassembly. Before we start this one, just make sure that the heirloom box tutorial up here, or whatever you've called it, is the active component. So it's it's this button here is pressed. Now we're going to operate off our first sketch, so we need to make that visible, but also we want to just make our box and lid disappear. And now here we can just edit sketch. And we'll come in very close here and I'm just going to show you how we can um, create these uh, the sort of the, the feathers or splines quite easily. So L for line and I'm just going to draw a line that basically goes from this outer line here across. I'm not going to worry about angles just yet. I'm going to set that up later. So I'm just going to go from there to there and you'll see it's it's this blue color which means it's it's sort of an undefined geometry. It doesn't know, it, there's no rules sort of, you know, placing it there. We're gonna change that. So I'm gonna add some constraints and you'll see these here. So two, I'm gonna have two constraints or two rules attached to this line. The first one is I want a coincident constraint. So I want this line to join to a point. So if I select coincident constraint, select the line, then select that point there you can now see that it is coincident with that point. Still, it is still blue though, so it's not fully constrained. The other thing that I want it to be is I want it to be perpendicular to this line here. So I'll select that and that, and there you go. We've now got it, it's gone black, it's now fully constrained. So I'm just gonna go around and keep, and, uh, keep doing that. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a problem here. So in this case, it's probably best just to, if I just press escape, select that piece of geometry and delete, and I'll just start again. So I'll just go line, come down here. Probably what happened is when I first drew the line, it probably just didn't join up with this line here properly. There we go. And then we'll do this final one. Okay, so we've got all that in there. So we might as well now finish that sketch. Pretty similar to before, what we've got to do is we've both got to create the um, the spline or create the, the material that's going to go in there, but also um, cut out uh, the space for it in the uh, corresponding component. So we'll start with a an extrude and I'm going to select, there's a little bit to select here, but so there'll be eight segments to select. Just pan up a little bit so that's a bit better. Okay, now the, the distance, cause we're gonna make it just a saw cut, it's gonna be three millimeters but we want it to be a cut. So we'll start with the actual housing for it and it's obviously not gonna be happy with that. So we want to actually turn our box assembly on. So uh, it's got a target that it can cut into, so it's happy with that. And in terms of the distance or, or where we want this cut to happen, we're gonna do an offset again. So we'll go um, offset and it's going to be material, sorry, it's going to be overall height. And I'm going to make it, I'm basically, what I want here is I'm going to have my bottom um, housings and my splines one fifth of the, uh, of the width of the material or the, the height of the material. Um, so that's how I'm going to set this up. So I'm just going to um, do overall height divided by five. And you can see where it's where it's appearing there, and it's going to be a cut. So that's okay. So there you go. So I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to do it one fifth um, down from the top. Uh, so we'll go uh, back in. I'm just going to turn that off again. 
So we'll go back in and we'll do an extrude. It's going to be three millimeters. It's going to be a cut. Uh, so we'll go, we've got to offset it. And the offset will be overall height times four fifths. And we'll turn our box assembly back on so it knows what it's going to cut into. And we'll go OK. So you can see them, see them there. If I turn the sketch off and orbit around, you'll be able to see that, that they're sitting quite evenly. Now, obviously now we've created the housings for that, and that can be done a couple of ways in the workshop. You can do it with a, a biscuit cutter. You can do it on a table saw, but that's a teacher, teacher operation. Okay, so we'll turn our sketch back on so that we can see it. And we'll turn our box assembly off. And so basically now we're going to do the same thing, but in instead of cutting, we're going to now create a new component there. So we'll go extrude, come back in and select what we want. Our distance is three millimeters. Our offset. So we'll start as before, we'll go overall height divided by five. And this will be a new component. And we'll call this bottom spline or bottom, yeah, bottom spline will do. And let's go again. Now, if we turn our box assembly back on, you can see that everything's fitting in exactly the right places. Um, so we'll just be good and give it a new name, give it a proper name. There we go. So let's turn our lid back on. And we'll turn that, turn our sketches back off. Now, what we've done here is obviously we've created some new components that are sitting outside of everything else. They should be part of our box assembly. So we can actually just select it and drag it into our box assembly. So again, we're just keeping everything neat and tidy.